Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday, TGIF. Ken Shreve uh, with you, filling in for Tom O'Brien. Tom um, on vacation, uh, enjoying some much-deserved uh, time off. I'm going to be handling hour number one of the Tom O'Brien show today, and then my uh, former colleague, good friend, Kate Stalter is going to be hosting our number two so uh, happy to have uh, happy to have you with me today appreciate it very much number to use as usual same number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight uh, we'll get ready to talk about uh, friday's market action in just a, a moment but uh, a couple of programming notes here I host my own show on TFNN. If you haven't heard uh, Breakout Investing, uh, be sure to tune in. Well, the show you know used to air every Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 4 Eastern starting next week. I'll be going five days a week from 3 to 4 Eastern, uh, Breakout Investing, so check that out. Uh, next week, going five days a week. And um, also David White, who hosts the Power Trading Hour, uh, he's going to be... Uh, his show for the for the rest of this month, uh, starting next week, he's going to be still be going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and then right at the end of this month, he's going to be going five days a week from uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Okay, so uh, David White will soon be five days a week. Uh, he's going to be moving from three Eastern to. Uh, 2 Eastern, and then my own show, Breakout Investing, on TFNN, will be starting next week, five days a week, 3 o'clock Eastern. So hopefully that wasn't uh, too confusing, but uh, again, thanks very much for uh, tuning in. And uh, just a reminder, check out uh, Tiger TV on the homepage of TFNN.com. Uh, you watch Tiger TV, you can check out charts uh, right along with me as uh, I go over them on the uh, program. Channel 1, you can... Um, uh, see the show live, hear the audio, and also see the uh, charts as well. So let's check in on the market here. I believe this is a final print on the NASDAQ uh, composite. Let's do one more update here. For those of you watching on Tiger TV, we'll see the NASDAQ composite um, down close to 39 points today, 1.3% to 2937. Got a close pretty much in the middle part of the trading range today. Could have been much worse. The composite hit an intraday low of 29.21, but uh, again, close to 29.37. Did have some buyers come in uh, late, not with um, not with uh, conviction, but uh, still good to see a close off the uh, off the lows. Let's uh, check on the S&P 500 as well. We'll see that the S&P 500 also. Uh, closed off its lows. Now the S&P 500 closed in the bottom half of its uh, trading range. So not much buying demand in the S&P 500 today. It closed down about uh, 13 points, nine tenths of a percent to 13.54 intraday low of 13.48 and an intraday high of 13.67. So. Kind of a tough day for the market. Uh, if there is a silver lining here, you know, again, I, I'm a fundamental and technical uh, investor. I have my own uh, newsletter at TFNN.com called Breakout Investing, which, um, or the, the newsletter itself, excuse me, is called Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks. That updates every... Uh, every Tuesday, I send out a comprehensive weekly update, and then I send out email buy and sell alerts uh, in, in between. Uh, so if you want to uh, check that out, you can go to kenshreve.com. That takes you to my information page at tfnn.com. You get 30 days free of uh, ultimate uh, growth stock. So be sure to uh, uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, volume today. Uh, what is uh, what? What's interesting is that uh, there wasn't a whole lot of volume behind the uh, selling today, which was uh, which was good. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange throughout the day was tracking lower than what we saw on Thursday. Volume Thursday on the New York Stock Exchange was below average at 680 million. Nasdaq volumes can be very close. Yesterday we had about. Almost 1.4 billion shares on the uh, Nasdaq uh, today. We're tracking pretty pretty close to that. So we got this we got this really strong broad based buy signal from the market exactly one week ago last Friday. That was at the conclusion of the two day Euro summit. We had uh, big strong percentage gains, um, not only in the S and P 500 but also in the Nasdaq Composite, the, the Russell 2000, the Dow. It was a broad based rally. It was a buy signal. It was a it was a time to start 
uh, moving some money in from the from the sidelines, and uh, and that's what I did with my uh, with my model portfolio. My um, Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter has a model growth portfolio. I've uh, added uh, four new names to the model portfolio since the buy signal last Friday. Didn't move all in. Still have a a, a pretty stealth uh, cash position, but uh, just nibbling at some stocks, and um, you know they're working uh, pretty well. Very very impressed with the price action in the home builders. There's still a lot of uh, disbelief out there how the how home builders uh, they were big winners in the first quarter but um, uh, I'm still very very comfortable holding uh, having some exposure to the home building uh, sector we'll check in on the home builders in just a little bit but they were very very strong today even when the market uh, was at its uh, lows the home builders were, were hanging in there uh, just fine. So uh, disappointing data before the open today, no question about it. Uh, June non-farm payrolls up 80,000. The consensus estimate was for uh, 100,000. So it wasn't a horrendously bad number, but it was a disappointing number. The reason the market had been rallying in recent days was, you know, perhaps we were going to see a 150, 175,000 number, but it came in a little bit below expectations and um, and that caused some, some selling in the market. Uh, but but again, the volume was uh, important today. It looks like NASDAQ volume, there's a chance it could come in slightly below what we saw Thursday, which is important. It, it, it lends some credibility to the buy signal that we got last uh, Friday. I did not sell anything in my model portfolio today. I've got some cushions out there. I want to give some some new holdings some time to work. I'm not bearish on this market. I'm still putting uh, some stock, uh, no pun intended, into that buy signal uh, that we got uh, last uh, last Friday. So not giving up on this uptrend uh, yet. Rough day for the market uh, today, but it'll be important just to see how the market trades uh, early uh, early next week. So 877-927-6648. Let's take our first call of the day from Toledo. Ohio. That is a uh, mud hen territory. Is I think that's a Toledo mud hens. Derek, how are you doing today? Pretty good. And yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks for calling. Staying cool. I hope it's 100 degrees over here. Oh man, it's been been hot in your neck of the woods, and I'm in I'm in Southern California, and you know I'm in the the San Fernando Valley, so it uh, it can get uh, pretty pretty hot out here too. So I think we're in the low low 90s uh, right now, but you know that California dry heat, I can't uh, can't complain. I know it well. My mom lives in uh, Fontana over there okay. in the desert area there. Yeah, I know that can, area pretty well. It could get hot out there too. Mm hmm. So what's going on, Derek? You want to talk uh, applied materials, huh? Right. I took it, took in a small position today, and I realized, you know, that the semis do pretty well in the latter part of the year. So I figured if, if I would put a little tester out there and then see what happens, and I was kind of curious as to whether or not, uh, you know, basically I bought it as a trade, and then maybe – if we pick up some momentum or what have you, maybe I could buy some more later on in the year. And I was kind of wondering what your opinion was on that. Yeah, so uh, applied materials, you know, I, I mentioned at the top of the show, I write the Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter at, uh, at, at TFNN.com. So I, I tend to, to target uh, stocks showing relative uh, price strength in the market. Even though applied materials doesn't isn't exactly showing relative price strength here, it has rallied nicely. Uh, you know, it showed relative price strength in recent weeks, no doubt about it. It's been in rally mode since uh, late May, early June early June. Uh, I think right now what's interesting about applied materials is that you're picking this up right at the just above the 50-day moving average. And if you look back uh, last week, even the, the prior week, it came down to its 50-day moving average, firmed up, uh, and rallied a little bit. So, you know, for a stock trading still a ways off its 52-week uh, its high, it, it strikes me as a, as a relatively low risk uh, entry point. I assume you you use stops when you invest in uh, in growth stocks. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I'd, I'd put a stop here, you know, maybe up to 5%, 10% below your purchase price. But I suspect this is probably going to firm up around that uh, 1095 dollars $11 area. And I think you've probably got a low risk, uh, low risk entry point here. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, Derek, thank you. All right, Derek, uh, thanks for the call. Headed into the first break, folks. Uh, Ken Shreve filling in for Tom O'Brien. We'll be right back.